Lip slurs are the bread and butter of the brass player's uh, technical practice. Um, while there are definitely other activities that we need to do, um, lip slurs are one of those tools that we need to do on a daily basis uh, to maintain our muscle tone, to maintain our flexibility, to maintain our tone quality. Um, a lip slur, simply enough, is just movement between two partials that utilize the same fingering. So, for example, on trumpet, um, G and C are both open fingerings. To go between those, um, I'm altering my embouchure by going from something uh, that is higher pitched, ah, to something more open and relaxed, oh. The corners of my mouth relax, the air speed that I'm using relaxes, um, and we're able to get a fuller sound. Right now with me, I would ask you just to play, uh, to sing rather, ah, oh. now you. I want you to think about the feeling as you went from oh. We want to simulate that same feeling within our mouth with tongue placement, with jaw um, presentation, and with the firmness of the corners as we play. So now going from F to B flat, those are concert pitches. For horns, um, you are going to be able to go from C down to F, so do it in a fifth higher. Here we go together, one, two half note on each one. Now, if you're having problems going down, I want you to consciously think about open, uh, thinking about creating more space. I don't necessarily need you to think slower air. I don't need you to think relax more, but just think open. Again, one, two, three. I also want you to think of that as being a glissando. Essentially what your lips are doing and what the mouthpiece is doing is a glissando. So if you go back to our siren, because its tube is so short, um, the partials are really close together. Once we add the length of the instrument in, we now only have that movement from a fifth in this register. Once more together, two, three. Now, within our text, we have a variety of pre-written lip slur activities, uh, but the reality is you can create um, lip slur patterns in any way that you want. Um, initially, you want to focus on just going between two partials. Um, most of you right now are either going to consistently have the first or second partial. Um, so your goal is being able to move freely between that first and second partial. Um, if you happen to have developed a higher register already and you're more comfortable moving between the third and second or fourth and third partial, you're welcome to do that as well. So start by using exercise one um, that's in your text as a, not necessarily specifically notate, but rather as the idea between whatever partials are convenient for you, comfortable for you, and then moving through them chromatically. So for me right now, I'm going from G to C. <laughs> I now go a half step down, which brings second valve in, if you're on trombone, second position. Now I go down another half step, which is first valve or third position. Down another half step. So one and two, or uh, a trombone, fourth position. Another half step down, two and three, or fifth position on trombone. Now another half step down, one and three, um, if you have a fourth valve on your instrument, euphonium and tuba, uh, that's fourth valve. And our final combination, one, two, three, 
that seventh position trombone, so it's going to be two and four if you're on euphonium or tuba with a fourth valve. <laughs> I lifted my fingers up on that one. Um, that's going to be a sequence that you want to go through. As you become more proficient or as you're more warmed up, then you want to add additional partials in. So you might have an exercise like number three in your book. In that case, as I move between three partials, I'm thinking with my tongue, ah, oh, ah, e, ah, oh, ah, e, ah. Now, it's possible you don't have three full partials to play in right now, and if that's the case, that's fine. Continue just working with the two. But as you move forward, um, lip slurs should be part of every day's practice. Just like there should be a little bit of mouthpiece work every day, um, to keep um, everything uh, limber and ready to go, uh, we want to do a little bit of lip slur work to as essentially our weight training. Um, this, these, are, these are the weights of the brass world, and it's really critically important that we focus on that. A couple of things I want you to pay really close attention to as you do lip slurs. Um, first, make sure that um, your air is what is controlling the sound. There is a tendency, especially on trumpet, which has this nice third, uh, fourth valve octave key, as it's been nicknamed, to just create uh, higher pitches by pushing. And the pitch will go higher, but it also creates a lot of potential orthodontic problems for you, um, repetitive stress injuries, and creates problems in the long run. Instead, we want to think, ah, pushing that sound always forward. While the embouchure does change, it's primarily propelled by the sound, or by the air that we're using. Faster, more continuous air, because the tongue is higher, making the space for that air to go through a little smaller. Um, second thing to uh, make sure that you're thinking about is as you go down, that you don't lose the focus of your tone. <laughs> That tendency is going to happen um, as you over-relax the embouchure. Again, make sure that we're thinking about air leading everything. So you're going from a high tongue position to a lower tongue position. But the jaw and the lips have relatively little movement in them, especially for high brass. Um, lip slurs need to be part of every day. They should be amongst the first things you do. Um, do not go further than you're capable of doing with good tone and good pitch. Uh, as soon as we start pushing and creating pressure, we start creating long-term problems that become bad habits and potentially uh, pose health damage uh, for your embouchure and your well-being.